Hello students, welcome to Statics, I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're going to do our first set of example problems for statics. And we're going to pull these examples from chapter one and get right into it. So chapter one covers a couple of key fundamental concepts for statics. These are concepts that are going to appear in just about every problem that we're going to solve this semester. So it's important for us to get these concepts down well. The first concept is the idea of dimensional homogeneity. What does that mean? It means that the dimensions that we start with should be the dimensions that we end with. If we have an equation, say the equation is a sum of the forces equation. Well, we know that force should have the units of newtons or the units of pound force, right? So when we solve this equation, we plug in and do our exercises, the final value we should get should be in terms of the units of newtons or pound force. And if at the end of the calculation, if we find something else, say we find newtons times meters, then that means we made a mistake somewhere in our equation. We didn't actually write the equation correctly to get the correct final units. And that is the concept of dimensional homogeneity, right? Now, this concept, it's, you know, we're going to see examples. Every problem we solve is going to be an example, right? So, so here we don't provide an example, but as we solve problems, when we're solving for force, we need units of force. When we're solving for moment, we need units of moment. If we were solving for energy, we need energy units as our final answer, right? Okay, so we're done with the first topic. Now let's move on to our second topic, which is significant figures, or also called significant digits, right? Now, whenever we make a calculation, that calculation can be at different orders of magnitude. The example we have here are three different numbers, 234, 2,340, and 23,400. These are all numbers that have different orders of magnitude. Now, if we were to look at those numbers and try to say, what are the significant digits or significant figures for these numbers, we could count them out. And we'd find that anything that's uh, uh, a real number, so, so there's three here, three significant digits, thing that's a real number or anything that, become, that comes before the dot is a real number. It's a significant digit. And we can just count. And we can see that these three numbers, the first one has three significant digits, the next one has four, the next one has five, right? And when we look closely, we see that the zeros, these zeros ahead of the decimal point, make the number of significant digits maybe a bit unclear, because is zero really significant, right? So instead of using this notation, this full notation where we write the number out all the way to the decimal point, instead, we should use engineering notation. This is a notation that allows us to round off to a good number of significant digits and then express our answers in powers of 10. So we multiply and multiples of 10 to the three, right? So our first example will be the last one here, this 23,400 uh, value. We want to convert this. We want to round the number, but we also, we want to convert it to an expression in powers of 10. Well, how do we do that? Well, first, we'll want uh, to, you know, take from where we are on our decimal point, and then we'll want to try to move, if we're, we're doing multiples of three, we want to move three points, one, two, three. And we'll move the decimal point over to the left. Now we have this number 23.4, right? Well, if we take 23.4 and then we multiply it by 10 to the 3, we took three steps, 1, 2, 3, so times 10 to the 3, we end up with the engineering notation for that value, right? So it's that straightforward, just moving the decimal point by each, each movement is one multiple of 10, all right? So let's try it on a small number. Let's try it on this number of of 0 
We want to try to do a multiple of three. Let's move it. One, two, three. That's a pretty good position to place it at. So we end up with a number of 8.21. Now, now that we've now since we've moved uh, to the right, what we're going to do is do a multiple, but we're going to put a negative sign on it. So we're going to put 8.21 times 10 to the power negative 3 because this is a small number, right? And then we can do that again for another example. This is an example of 0 0.000582. And what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and do that multiples approach. Move it 1, 2, 3 points, and we'd end up with 0.582. That's um, okay. Or another option is we can move it another 3 points, and have 582, all right? And either of those two choices is appropriate because we're at a multiple of three, but in our first case here, we get 0 0.582 times 10 to the negative three. In our second case, we get 582 times 10 to the negative six. And either of those is appropriate, all right? So we can do this same exercise with any number. Any number that we get when we're solving a problem, we can convert it into engineering notation. And note that in all of these cases, we are leaving ourselves with three to four significant digits, right? And that's actually what we want. That's, that's actually what we require for engineering notation is that we have three to four significant digits in our final answer and that we're taking it as a multiple of 10. So now, let's move on to rounding off numbers. Uh, sometimes we'll have a number that has many different trailing values in it. It doesn't go 3.55000, but it actually goes and has numerical values trailing into many different, into many significant digits, right? Now, that long trailing number with many different numerical values that is not something that we want to report. We want to report something that has three to four total significant digits. So let's learn how to round off. We'll start with this example number of 3.5587. We want to round this number to three significant digits. So let's count out one, two, three significant digits. So our, our three significant digits are 3.55, right? Now, if we look at the fourth digit, the one here that's boxed in blue, our, our fourth digit is the value of eight. And if it's eight, which is a number that's greater than five, then we're gonna round up. So when we round up, we're gonna find our value is 3.56 because we're rounding up on that fourth term, right? Let's repeat that process, but for a number that's a little different. Let's, let's repeat it for 3.5547. We select our three significant digits, 3.55, and we analyze the fourth digit. This fourth digit is less than five, so we're gonna round down this answer. And by rounding down, what we are actually going to do is stay at the value that we initially had. So our rounded down answer is 3.55, right? That is rounding down. Okay. So now we've got, you know, the answer. If we have a, uh, a fourth number that is greater than five or less than five, now let's look at what happens if we have an odd, even, or uh, zero term, and when our fifth, when our fourth number is five, right? So let's consider the number ten point seven five. We want to round this to three significant digits. Let's take our first three: one, zero, point seven. So ten point seven. Those are our three significant digits. Our fourth digit is five, right? That kind of messes us up a little bit because our fourth digit is five. It's not greater than five. It's not less than five. It's exactly five. 
So what do we do? In this case, we're gonna look at our third digit and our third digit here is seven. That is a odd number. And since it's an odd number, we're gonna round up. So now we're gonna take this 10.7 and make it 10.8, okay? Now, what happens if we have a, a, a even number? What if we had 10.25? So we've got three significant digits, 10.2, and then our fourth number is a five, right? We examine our third number, we see that two is an even number, so what do we do? In this case, we're gonna round down, so we'll end up with 10.2, okay? All right, now what about, what if our, our, our number is zero? What if we have the case where it's zero? So let's look at 10.05. We have one, two, three significant digits. Our fourth one is exactly five, and our third one is zero. If we have a zero, then what we're gonna do is we are going to round up to 10.1, and there we go. Now, why do we have such weird rules for the case when the fourth digit is five? A lot of times this, 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 these rules arrive from unit conversion. Sometimes we need to convert our units from English units to metric units. And that can be tricky when we're dealing with sizing of bolts and sizing and, 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 uh, and tolerances and things bet between different sets of units from inches to millimeters, right? You've got to convert those units and then you need to round the number, right? So these odd, even and zero rules tend to help us when we're trying to convert from a bolt that's in inches to a bolt that's in millimeters by giving us some systematic approach to how we round. Right. So. Um, so that's pretty much our first example video. We do. There, there is one final statement that must be very clear. And that is this process, this entire process of significant figures, engineering notation and rounding off numbers. These steps should be the last steps we do when we're solving a problem. We should not round off, we should not eliminate significant digits or figures in the intermediate steps of our calculations. A lot of times in statics, we may have to do 10 calculations that feed into each other or more, right? And to, in order to get to our final answer. We do not wanna round off at each of those intermediate steps. Each time we do that in an intermediate step, we add a little bit more error to our problem. And when we do get to the final answer, it could be way off. So do not round off or do anything to your intermediate calculations. Take the big number, right? Only the final answer should we actually do the rounding off so that we can get the right final answer to the, to the right level of accuracy, all right? So you know, keep that in mind as you're trying to solve problems and, and definitely when we get to the more complicated problems where there's many things that need to feed into each other. All right. So that's our first example video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have questions, add them to the con comments below this YouTube video. And I'll see you all in the next video.